and the near total Civil War era ban that continues to hang over our heads only serves to create more chaos for women and doctors in our state. As governor, I promised I would do everything in my power to protect our reproductive freedoms. Here's what I've done so far and how we can continue to work together to end this never ending assault on our basic rights. First, my executive order removing the ability of county attorneys to prosecute women and doctors for performing abortions remains. I refuse to allow extremist county prosecutors to use this abortion ban to lock up women and doctors seeking or providing needed health care. Second, my administration has expanded access to over-the-counter contraceptives. Today, Arizonans across the state can walk into their pharmacy to obtain birth control medication without a doctor's prescription. Third, last year I vetoed legislation that would have threatened access to IVF and potentially endangered access to any and all abortions in our state. And any other legislation that threatens to take away our rights will continue to be met with my veto stamp. Fourth, I am calling on the legislature to do the right thing right now and repeal this 1864 ban and protect access to reproductive health care. The Republican majority in the legislature has time and again refused to act to protect our freedoms. They have refused to repeal this civil war, extreme civil war, near total abortion ban. In fact, the Senate President and House Speaker fought in this very case to keep this extreme ban in place, and as it stands, they might have their way. They have refused to act to protect IVF and contraception. Instead, they tell women to put aspirin between their knees. Well, I'm proud to be a backstop to their extremism. Arizona women should never have to fear the next court decision. It's why I'm proud to be standing here with Senator Birch and Representative Stahl Hamilton and these other legislators who are dedicated to protecting our freedoms. We are 14 days away from this extreme ban coming back to life. It must be repealed immediately. And while I'm glad IVF and contraception are still available to Arizonans, we know they are under attack. Just last year, I vetoed a bill that would have threatened access to IVF. We must act proactively to protect these essential rights. Finally, this November, Arizonans may have an opportunity to make their voices heard on this important issue. To the people across Arizona who are concerned about the future of abortion rights in our state, who are worried about their bodily autonomy, who don't want to see the freedom of their wives, sisters, and daughters restricted, you can make your concerns known at the ballot box, and I encourage you to do so. Now I'm going to hand it over to Representative Stahl Hamilton. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Governor Hobbs, for the work that you are doing and what you will continue to do to protect our freedoms. And thank you all for being here. This is a devastating day, but we are far from being defeated. How, how can we be defeated when the vast majority of Arizonans, nine out of 10, support the right to get an abortion and want government out of our reproductive health care decisions? The Ducey Supreme Court Chose, and chose chaos and immediate chaos, fear, legal jeopardy for tens of thousands of everyday Arizonans and our medical professionals whose health care decisions within 14 days could be superseded by a law passed during the Civil War, decades before Arizona became a state and before women had the right to vote. Republicans will not stop here. Every Republican in the legislature supported this decision, not you. And this is evidenced by the Speaker of the House and Senate President submitting an amicus brief on their behalf arguing for the Civil War era ban. This is not the end of our fight. Now is the time to continue 
our work together to repeal this ban, beginning with passing the Arizona Right to Contraception Act to ensure Arizonans hold on to their rights to make their own decisions about when to start a family with no government interference. Efforts ramping up around the country illustrate that contraception is next. I know that there is an initiative out there gathering signatures to codify abortion rights in our state, and I felt it would pass with overwhelming numbers. Now, I have no doubt. I am proud to stand with the governor and my legislative colleagues who have your back. This, this is the beginning of putting our anger to work. Find a friend, grab a neighbor or relative, sign the petition, collect signatures, and remind our government of the political will of our people. They don't get to have the final word. Thank you. Good morning. I am State Senator Eva Birch. A couple weeks ago, I had an abortion, a safe, legal abortion here in Arizona for a pregnancy that I very much wanted, a pregnancy that failed, like many of my pregnancies before it, an embryo that was dying, and a miscarriage that was destined to happen. Somebody took care of me. Somebody gave me a procedure so that I wouldn't have to experience another miscarriage, the pain, the mess, the discomfort. And now we're talking about whether or not we should put that doctor in jail. This is outrageous that we would even dignify the consideration of this type of ban. A ban drafted when women had no say, when Arizona was not a state. This isn't what the people of Arizona or the people of this country want. We're talking about a small number of really extreme political leaders calling the shots for everybody else. Republicans don't want this. Independents don't want this. Democrats don't want this. We have to look at who our elected leaders are. The time is now. It's done. I've had enough. The people of Arizona have had enough. We are electing pro-choice candidates in November. Watch it happen. That's all I have to say. I'm not a legislator. Um, but I'm here because I signed the governor's brief in this case, and I'm deeply saddened, sorry, by the court's decision. I participated in this brief because I caught a glimpse firsthand of what happens when abortion is inaccessible and you need one. We simply can't tolerate this in our state, Arizona, that we all love and call home. My husband and I were surprised to learn that we were pregnant just three weeks after our wedding and shocked when we discovered that it was twins. We couldn't contain ourselves and immediately told everyone. We were even picking out names and looking at wallpaper for their nursery. They were so loved. For our anatomy scan, our friends placed bets on their genders, and we learned that our twins were a girl and a boy. We also learned that our boy, twin B, had a critical heart defect that was pumping blood into his lungs. Our joy turned into despair. They scheduled a follow-up, and we went home, nervous wrecks, but trying to remain positive. Our doctor explained that this was very serious, that I might not be able to carry this pregnancy to term, and that it was high risk for our healthy twin and also for me. She explained the process of a selective reduction, a specialized procedure that would stop the heart of twin B and allow me to continue to carry twin A to term. The doctor was working to arrange this for us 
but the one facility she knew to provide it was not able to. This procedure was technically legal at the time, but reproductive health care is generally scarce in a state like Arizona where a doctor's freedom to safely provide or even recommend abortion care is constantly under threat. Since that facility could not help us and the clock was ticking, our doctor let us know that she was calling physicians she knew all over the country and that we may need to travel to New York or DC. We were relieved when she finally let us know that she found a doctor in LA who could help us. And so in March of 2020, as the world was shutting down, I was 20 weeks along in my twin pregnancy and we were able to get the care we needed in LA. The selective reduction procedure took place safely in an operating room in a hospital because it is health care. It was $9,000 up front and out of pocket. We went home where I carried our healthy baby and our dead baby for the remaining harrowing four months of my pregnancy before going into labor and delivering both of them. It was an otherwise safe, normal vaginal delivery. My experience was traumatic, but could have been so much worse had I not been able to access the care that I needed. I'm grateful every day that I was able to, but I should not have had to leave the state for that. Many Arizonans might not be able to say the same, and nobody should have to. Thank you. Okay. We'll open things up for questions. If you can please raise your hands, and we have a lot, of, a lot of people here. We'll get to everybody right there. What does this mean for Plan B going forward? All right, you have just been listening to reaction from this very big decision. The Arizona Supreme Court ruled today that all elective abortions are now illegal. This means that doctors will be on notice that all abortions, except those necessary to save a woman's life, are now illegal. You we can see Governor Hobbs, her emotional like reaction this right to now. this. She it. is saying and that she so has asked so the Arizona so legislature so to so repeal so that so law. So this was a very lengthy so ruling from the Arizona Supreme so Court, so basically so stating so that so criminal so and regulatory so sanctions so may so apply so to so abortions so performed so after 15 uh, weeks of gestation. Again, the bottom line, this decision goes back to the pre-Civil War law that allows abortions to remain in effect. We've heard from Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays, who is this a Democrat. Is, is she has quickly right condemned here. today's decision by the Arizona Supreme Court. Governor Hobbs right now uh, taking some reporter questions, but it's she has said earlier that this is extreme, that it hurts women, and that she promises to protect reproductive freedoms. Again, this has been a very emotional reaction from leaders, from our Arizona leaders, as well as Governor Hobbs. Politically, this will have a very big effect on November's election. Of course, 12 News will continue to bring you coverage on this very historic abortion ruling all day on air, online at 12news.com and on all streaming platforms. We'll be back on the air during the noon hour and again for 12 News at 1 with more in-depth analysis. Now we return you back to regular programming.